What's going on everybody? Jim Mint here back with another Omnibus and Collected Edition haul. Huge shout out to Marvel Comics. They sent us all of these trade paperbacks, epic collections, treasury editions, uh, I believe one of the Omnis, and everything else was from our friends at Organic Price Books. I want to give a big thanks to JP for sponsoring this video. Guys, make sure to check out OrganicPriceBooks.com for any Omnis and Collected Editions. Make sure to use the code Gem Mint to save $2 off every order. They have great customer service, super fast shipping, and a great selection of books. So once again, thank you to Organic Price Books. Now before I get into these, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. We got a big giveaway going on for our next subscriber milestone of 150K, and we're giving away this Deja Thoris premium format statue by Sideshow. Just stay tuned until the end of the video and I'll give you more details on the giveaway. Now, as you can see, we have a ton of books. I'm not going to do overhead shots and go too thorough into the trade paperbacks. I think most of you guys are here for the Omnis, and I don't want this to be a 45-minute video, so I'll just go over the trades and give you guys my thoughts on them. So first is the Strange Academy Volume 2. They make these kind of like smaller, almost like fun-sized trade paperbacks. Uh, this is by Scotty Young and, and Humberto Ramos. Now, I did drop off of the, this series, I think, after the first arc, so I haven't read this material this uh, collects issues 7 through 12, and it has a $14 cover price. I hear great things about it. I, I thought it was getting a little slow. Uh, my boy Rockin' Robbie says it really picked up, so catch up in trades if you want. All right, then we are on to Volume 2 of Cable. This is by Jerry Dugan and Phil Noto. Uh, this is a $17.99 book, and it collects issues 7 through 12. This recently ended. I feel like it went past issue 12, though. Or this might be it, actually. I really dug this. I thought it was underrated. Um, it was one of my standouts, one of the few titles I didn't drop from Dawn of X because slowly I started losing titles one after the other, but Cable was one that I really enjoyed. Then moving over, we have a Reign of X Volume 4. Now this is the first time Marvel has sent me one of these trades in this format. Like they have X-Men, Marauders, X-Factor, Excalibur, Cable in their own individual trades, but they also doubled and did like volumes based on reading order throughout, uh, throughout all the titles. So this has like... Wolverine 10, Excalibur 17, X-Factor 6, Cable 8, Children of the Atom 1 with a $18 cover price. Uh, so another way to kind of read this, and that's how you would have really read it uh, in single issue. So Volume 4 is out. Then we have the trade paperback for Alien Bloodlines. This is by uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, Salvador La Roca, and Guru EFX. Loving this Aliens run. This is the first arc. Collects issues 1 through 6. Uh, issue 7 starts the new arc, which you don't necessarily need you can kind of just jump right in but i highly recommend to picking up uh, this first trade to get caught up it feels like the movie uh it's eerie it's got the same type of cinematics to it interesting stories and this kind of overarching story that uh i'm hoping i'm thinking we're going to revisit it with this next arc so it's out uh then we kind of mentioned this briefly children of the atom volume one this is uh by vita ayala along with uh, bernard chang paco medina marcelo mialo and david curell it has six issues and material for marvel voices one you know i was really intrigued with the first couple of issues it's like this team of mutants that they're not able to get access to krakoa they can't go through the portal but they seemingly have mutant powers but i don't know it, it ended up being less of a superhero book and i just lost interest so i stopped reading it uh, trade is out. I think this is the full series. Then we have the Black Knight. So this is Curse of the Ebony Blade, Spurrier, Davila, Parsons, and Prianto. This collects issues one through five. This was a mini series. I really liked it. I really liked the whole uh, Daniel Whitman third version of the Black Knight. I loved his interaction with the Avengers and the kind of explanation on how he uses the Ebony Blade and why regular Avengers can't use it. It's out in trade if you want to get caught up. I had a lot of fun with this miniseries. They're really trying to kind of explore the Black Knight as he'll be in the Eternals movie. Then we have Spider Shadow by Chip Zdarsky. This is the What If series, which was a five-issue miniseries. He's joined by Pasquale Ferry and Matt uh, Pasquale Ferry and Matt Hollingsworth. Eighteen-dollar book. I really dug it. What if Spider-Man kept the symbiote? What if he didn't give it up and it didn't go to Eddie Brock? And w what's the ramifications of that? Cool little what if. I love the format. Give us uh, more than just a one shot for a what if to really delve out the story. Is that a word? Yes. All right, guys. Then we have Immortal Hulk. This is great power. Now, this contains three one shots from the Immortal Hulk run, not part of the uh, 1 through 50 series. It collects uh, Hulk, great power, uh, the threshing place, and flatline, plus some material from Time of Monsters. 
Yo, honestly, I enjoyed the one shots more so than most of the Incredible Hulk arc. I really love the first arc, the Green Door stuff, but you really lose me at any time you have um, what's her name, the Elizabeth uh, Ross character. I forget. Uh, and it just kind of got really wonky and out there. But the one-shots were really nice. Just spending time with this version of the Hulk. Uh, had good cinematics. Like, kind of deep stuff that made you think. All in this trade. Alright, guys. Then we are on to Fantastic Four. This is the Bride of Doom. And this is on to the stuff that I have not read. Uh, $20 gets you issues 31 through 35. Rock and Robbie, my partner in crime, doing the top 10 comics. Feels like Dan Slott really got into his groove with this run and that he's doing a great job on Fantastic Four. And that's coming from a diehard Fantastic Four fan. I haven't jumped into it. I'm assuming they're going to make an omnibus of this and maybe one day I'll get caught up on Slott's Fantastic Four. All right, then we have Captain Marvel. This is issues 27 through 30. This is volume 6. And this is by Kelly Thompson, uh, Jamie... McKelvey, David Lopez. I haven't been reading this whatsoever. I, I have no idea what this is about. I, I haven't even heard, you know, whether there's good things on this or not. You guys got to let me know. Was the current Captain Marvel run something worth reading? I just totally missed it. And the last of the trades, it's another one that I missed, but I've heard great things about this. This is Black Widow. It collects the uh, issues six through ten by Kelly Thompson. Yeah, so this is volume two. A lot of people in my weekly comic book review say I should be reading Black Widow, that it's dope. I haven't got into this, but um, Volume 2 is out. I got to see if I got Volume 1 somewhere in there. All right, guys. Next up, we have an epic collection. This is Spider-Man, and this is called The Death of Captain Stavey. St uh, the Death of Captain Stacy. Stan Lee, John Romita, Gil Kane, Roy Thomas. Uh, this is Volume 6. Collects issues 86 through 104. This material is collected in the Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 Omnibus. So if you collect Omnis... Or maybe you just collect epic collections. Uh, this was a big deal for Marvel Comics. And what's funny is there's another book in here that's kind of similar. Like, A Real Death. Killed uh, Captain Gwen, St Captain Stacy, and then eventually killed Gwen Stacy by the hands of the Green Goblin. Uh, deaths in comics that mattered at the time. I mean, they were brought back eventually, right? But uh, in canon, overall, they're still dead. So, uh, the epic collection, chock full of material. Uh, not the type of collection... Or format that I collect you guys know me I'm all about the Omni so let's jump into these first one is the Batwoman omnibus this collects her new 52 stuff which has issues 0 through 24 it also has detective comics 854 through 863 Batwoman new 52 0 and Batwoman annual one this thing has a $100 cover price a great creative team on here let's take a look at some overhead shots all right, so here is the front of the dust jacket. Kind of a unique art style with <laughs> the bad logo on the boot there. Some great creators, though. J.H. Williams III, Greg Rucka, just to name a few. Uh, pretty plain uh, spine here. And then here we have the back. Uh, it gives us a little synopsis of what's going on. Biography on the creators. As I said, $100 cover price. And what it collects right here. Here's a look at the inside of the dust jacket. So pretty cool artwork kind of comes together. And then here we have the art on the actual hardcover itself. So this is, uh, like I said, a run that I have never gotten into. I've always been interested on the character, mainly from like sideshow statues and wondering like, all right, we got Batgirl, who is Batwoman? So this looks like a pretty good place to jump on with some great creators. Uh, having flipped through this earlier, has some great artwork in this book. Here we go. And then you get like your... Uh, your J.H. Williams the third type of uh, paneling here. Yeah, so like I said, great artwork throughout. I'm not really sure how the story holds up. I mean, I'm sure somebody in the comments will uh, will speak on it. But um, yeah, J.H. Williams is a great artist. You guys know him from Promethea. He's currently doing Echo Lands. He has a great style to him. Greg Rucka has got some great stuff under his belt as well. But uh, yeah, kind of interesting... Uh, character here I, I know she's quite different than the rest of the bat family so here you go the whole omni let's see what's going on in the back for any bonus materials you can see the art style kind of changes hands throughout so you get variant covers and extras here always cool to include that stuff got a mad magazine variant that's from the dust jacket you have some sketchbook stuff 
some scripts. Next up, guys, we got a big boy omnibus with Deathstroke by Christopher Priest. This is huge. Now, this is the rebirth run. I didn't get back into reading single issues until probably when did Tiny and Takeover Batman? Issue 70 something. Uh, so I missed this run, but this is a huge Omni. It collects 50 issues from that series, but it also has the Deathstroke Rebirth issue one. It also has uh, the first annual DC Holiday Special, uh, Teen Titans 8 and 28 through 30, plus Titans 11 and Teen Titans, the Lazarus Contract Special one, $150 book. Huge stuff here. Uh, let's flip through it together. All right, the front of the dust jacket. And, and speaking of Christopher Priest, what's the deal with a Black Panther omnibus already, right? You would think that would have been pumped out a while ago. Here goes the back. Uh, again, a little biography on the story, what it collects here. Huge omnibus, so much content with a $150 cover price. Nothing much going on on the inside of the dust jacket here. Just a column Deathstroke art and a biography on Christopher Priest. Artwork on the actual cover, much better than the dust jacket. We got that big spine. Once again, some graphics on the back. So yeah, like I said, I was a little late to this one. You know, if there was a new Deathstroke ongoing right now, I definitely would pick it up and review it weekly. Uh, I did pick up the Deathstroke Inc. one. Wasn't really loving it, to be honest. Uh, but this one seems to have much more potential. I mean, it lasted for so many issues. Uh, part of the, the Rebirth launch. And like I said, if, with the uh, Batwoman omnibus flipping through here, like the artwork, I'm digging the character, just not really sure uh, on the story, I haven't read this one yet. So just flip through and take a look at some of the, the panels here. Here goes the Teen Titans tie-ins, some Flash tie-ins. <laughs> Deathstroke vs. Santa Claus. That must be the DC holiday special. All right, let's see uh, if we got any extras in this one. Nope, just well, a couple of things here. Okay, some cover layouts, some connecting covers. So not that much, but what it lacks in bonus, uh, you get in regular content. All right, guys, next up, coming from Marvel, Fantastic Four, Volume 4. This is uh, the stuff that really got me into Omnis, collecting Marvel Silver Age books, just one through whatever to finish off the run. Volume 4 is giving us issues 94 through 125. This has a $100 cover price, and we'll flip through it now. All right, and the cover of the Omnibus is the anniversary issue, the 100th issue, which I prefer on my Silver Age Marvel Omnis to have like that original cover. Uh, the spine, man, again, the, the change to the Silver Age spines, not sure what uh, the thought process was behind that, but, you know, that's what we got. Like I said, $100, collects issues 94 through 125, and you get all the covers on the back. All right, so the inside of the dust jacket, it has uh, kind of like explaining the era that they're in and the switching hands of creative teams. It does give a synopsis of some of the stories and, of course, biography on the creators. Then you have your graphics on the hardcover. They keep it pretty simple. For the silver age stuff now i mentioned like creators uh changing here so this is the end of an era uh the end of jack kirby on fantastic four when he went over to dc uh and then you had john ramita senior uh taking over and that was short-lived and then it went to john Busema. so uh this omnibus kind of follows through that path from going from the 60s into the 70s of fantastic four I haven't gotten this far in my original Fantastic Four read-through, but I'm digging the artwork. It's got like Kirby vibes, right? But uh, it's bigger, bigger panels, cleaner lines and inks and coloring. And uh, it just looks like everything that Kirby did, but just kind of like perfected, right? So uh, awesome to add this to the library, man. Like if I ever downsize, like this is the type of stuff that I would keep. You got the fan page, the, the letters sections in this book, in these books, man. That's that's awesome. Uh, okay, so you got a, a Joe Sinnott afterward. You got a lot of bonuses here. Look, original pages. The Lost Adventure. Some more original art. 
some pinups, covers, more interiors. Uh, looks like reprint covers. And covers for like collected editions and such. And last up for the Marvel Omnibus, but not for the books, we have X-Men The Inferno Prologue. So, the OHC re-released as an Omnibus, uh, which it should have been from the beginning. The, the three-book set, which I did review some years back, um, is re-released here. This has a $100 cover price. It collects a slew of titles leading up to the Inferno event. We'll take some overhead shots, we'll see what it collects, and we'll flip through it. All right, so here's the cover for the Inferno Prologue Omnibus. You know, I ended up selling my oversized hardcovers when I was kind of just trying to narrow it down, just collect the Omnibus, and uh, these were OHCs at the time. So since then, we've got the Inferno Omnibus. Now we have the Prelude, $100 cover price. Collects X-Factor 27 through 32, Annual 3, Uncanny X-Men 228 to 238, New Mutants 62 through 70 uh, with Annual 4, X-Men Annual 12, and material from Marvel Age Annual 4, and Marvel Fanfare 40 uh, with the $100 cover price. Uh, once again, the inside of the dust jacket giving us a synopsis of where we're at with X-Men. This is the Australian Outback team tying it in with what's going on in the Marvel Universe with the Evolutionary War and then leading into the rise of Limbo. Uh, you have a biography on the creators, Chris Claremont, Louis Simonson, and more. Then we have the graphics on the hardcover, same as the dust jacket, spine is the same, and, and the back is the same, essentially non-trade dress versions. So like I mentioned, uh, I, I read these three books, the, the, pro, the, uh, the prologue, the main story, and the crossovers, I did a review on them. Um, you know, I just kind of remember them feeling very like 80s fantasy, like Louis Simonson kind of could have made that story with any characters but it just so happens to start the x-men and it led up into the rise of these demons from inferno uh and they ended up trying to basically create hell on earth so this is all the stuff that's leading up to that and, and all these different titles kind of crossing over here's evolutionary war stuff that's happening like i said at the same time but I am happy that they reprinted these as omnibus it's funny it's kind of like marvel made them omnis because they know that's what we like to look at on the shelf, but that Silver Age spine still can't get over that. I don't know why that changed. Uh, so it looks exactly the same as the OHC. You got some bonuses in the back, some great artwork, some sketches, and some original art. All right, guys, here we go. We have the big treasury edition for Carnage Red. Uh, black white and blood this has a $30 cover price it collects the four issue series I think I have gone over the Wolverine one they've been doing a lot of these red white and blue black white and red books uh, which really showcase uh, a number of stories per issue by different creative teams with great artwork in the theme of the title so let's go ahead and flip through and see what it looks like on the inside all right so another treasury edition I, I do like how these are built it's like a trade paperback um, format but it's got like enforced spines so here's the front you have the spine here and in the back you can already get a feel of what it's going to look like with the artwork uh so a ton of creators on here who do you have teeny howard benjamin percy al ewing donny cage chip zadarsky rom v dan slot so so you can get an idea of all the big names that contribute to these uh three stories per issue if i recall so here's the interior and then boom getting into the artwork so Carnage is hot right now, man. Pr pretty, uh, pretty much a good idea to get this stuff out now. And here you go, like everything's black and white except the Carnage stuff is red. It's kind of cool. It's a nice, cool, like gimmicky thing that they're doing with a lot of characters. Other publishers have kind of followed suit as well. I'm not sure who started it. DC's doing like a red, white, and blue with Superman, and like a black and gold with Wonder Woman. I know Dynamite did something with like this with Red Sonia as well. It's a nice artistic kind of thing. Some variants in the back. In Hyuk Lee Carnage is dope. Who's that? Patrick Gleason. Kind of going off of that Spider-Man 55 cover. If you're a Carnage fan, Symbiote fan, uh, and just a fan of art, this is a cool book to own. 
All right, guys. Lastly, we have this huge oversized hardcover for the death of Captain Marvel. I kind of alluded to this earlier. One of the big deaths that really mattered and kind of shook the Marvel Universe when it happened. This took place in Marvel Graphic Novel 1, the first one, which has some great artwork. This book also collects uh, Marvel Super Heroes 12 and 13, Captain Marvel 1 uh, with issue 34, and Marvel Spotlight issues 1 and 2 with a $45 cover price. I'm not really sure what they call this format. It's kind of like a treasury edition, but it's a hardcover. Let's take a look at it. All right, confession time. I have never read this story. I've heard so much about it. I've seen this iconic cover from Marvel Graphic Novel 1 for years. Uh, I just never read it. And uh, flipping through this, it looks interesting, man. Like, you know, We talked about the price and what it collects. I thought this was a Jusco piece at first. This is something I could knock out and bust a review out, man. Like I've done that with a couple of these kind of like iconic... Uh, oversized hardcover editions that Marvel has come out with. I feel like I did it with an, uh, an X-Men one not too long ago. What was it again? Um, God Creates, Man Kills, was it? Anyway, here's some of the original Captain Marvel stuff, kind of prepping you on who the character is, uh, leading up to Marvel Graphic Novel 1, which is the death of Captain Marvel. So here it goes. They put a lot into those Marvel Graphic Novels back in the day, man. You can see it has like... Uh, higher production value it feels like like i don't know they just put a lot more time in it it seems but like i said during a time in comics where they killed somebody and it was like whoa he's really dead like he's not coming back tying it with the thanos stuff around that time before the infinity gauntlet that's cool man with scrolls and kree cool man all right, guys, and there's the haul for today. Let me know which books you're picking up in the comments down below. Like I said, we're doing a big giveaway for our next subscriber milestone of 150K. We're giving away that Deja Thoris premium format by Sideshow, and that's all you got to do. Just be subscribed, leave a like, and comment below. Once we hit the milestone, we'll go live, pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, but don't go anywhere. Check out my other omnibus hauls, as well as my statue reviews and my new comic book day reviews. Stay minty fresh, y'all. Peace.